Well, good morning again, or afternoon, and welcome to chapters 25 and 26 of the Aidan O'Voran video podcast series or collection or something. The word of the day is rain, and I'm choosing that word because it's raining outside. In fact, later tonight, it's supposed to snow. This is May. It's not supposed to snow in May. I mean, what's going on here? So anyway, um, but yeah, I'm sure you all will all remember the winter storm that came through in May through the Northeast. Hmm, this should be very interesting. Anyway, um, and now I will use rain in a sentence. I wish it would rain pizza. <laughs> you knew that was coming. I know you did. Wouldn't it be awesome just raining like boom Donatos or Dominoes or Jets or... Okay, wake up, wake up, Alan. All right. Um, a fun fact of the day is, so you know I write books. I also write music. Did you know that? Now, now as far as the books go, yes, I wrote Aiden of Oren. It was the first book I ever wrote, and... I even write picture books like that. That's a big fella. <laughs> Funny, I would have big fella right behind me because I'm kind of a big fella. But um, I also write music. The song that you hear every time the podcast starts, that is called McKinsey's Song. And I wrote it <clears throat> years ago. I write a lot of music. Every time I write a book, I write a song. In fact... For this book, I wrote two songs, McKenzie's song and another one I will share with you at the end of the book. <laughs> now you got to keep going till the end. Anyway, I know I'm taking up valuable class time. If you're watching this in class, <clears throat> time to get to the story. Here we go. Classes. Bum, 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 bum. See, I'm going slower. Yeah, yeah. So I don't put my eye out. There we go. A little dirty, huh? That's okay. And you know what else? Coffee. It's a thing. <clears throat> and here we go. So guess what? The chapter we're about to read today, chapter 25, is called McKenzie's Song. Is that just a coincidence? No, it is not just a coincidence. So, um, here we go. McKinsey's Song. During the night, a rolling fog blanketed the woods. Lily was awakened by the sound of soggy footsteps. She sat up just in time to see Aiden plop down on the ground across from the ashes of last night's fire. You're all wet, she exclaimed. You'll never guess what I found, said Aiden, trying to catch his breath. You see, last night, I was talking to... Wait! Where's Mackenzie? Lily was frantic. She's not here. Shh! Aiden held his finger in front of his lips. Listen. A soft, small voice could be heard in the distance. Do you hear her? Lily listened for a moment as a broad grin broke across her face. Mackenzie's singing, she whispered. I try so hard to get her to sing with me while we work, but she's just too shy. That's funny, laughed Aiden. I can't believe Mackenzie could be shy about anything. Only her singing. But doesn't she have the sweetest little voice? Aiden closed his eyes. She sings like an angel. There was a shuffling under Mackenzie's blanket, and then Charles stuck his head out. What's all the racket? he asked. Shh, Aiden scolded. Mackenzie's singing, and we're trying to enjoy it. Charles ducked back under the blanket, mumbling something about needing more sleep. Aiden noticed that Damon was also awake. He seemed to be listening to Mackenzie off in the distance, and for the first time, appeared happy. Let's go see where she is, Aiden said. 
but we should be very quiet so as not to interrupt her. I like singing, said Damon, as he quickly pitter-pattered his way toward the direction of Mackenzie's voice. Aiden helped Lily up, and together they followed the little dragon down the path. They rounded a very large tree and were greeted by the most beautiful sight. Mackenzie had found a strand tied between two giant flowers. With her arms held out to each side, Mackenzie balanced herself three feet off the ground. She was singing a most beautiful song. Isn't that lovely? asked Lily, who stood behind the tree out of sight from Mackenzie. This is such a perfect moment. Doesn't she have great balance? asked Aiden. You know, I'm the one who taught her how to walk on narrow logs. Look at those huge flowers. I wonder where she got that rope. Don't be silly, said Aiden. There's no rope out. Here, and those flowers... Wait, if the flowers are that large, what else could be large out here? With a chill running down his spine, Aiden immediately ran over to Mackenzie. What are you doing here? She said, startled. Aiden touched the rope Mackenzie was balancing on and yanked his hand back in horror. This isn't a rope, Mackenzie, he said as he put her on his shoulders. It's sticky. It feels like the kind of strand a spider might make. Aiden, said Lily, now starting to panic, how large of a spider would it take to make a strand like that? A loud rumbling sound startled the children. I'm hungry, said Damon, as he tugged on Aiden's pants. There's no time for that, said Aiden. With Mackenzie still on his shoulders, he hurried back toward camp. Lily and Damon were not far behind. We should pack our things and continue to the northwest, said Aiden, obviously worried. Where's Charles? asked Mackenzie. He was sleeping under the blanket when we left, said Lily, as she ran her hands through the bedding. But he's not here now. The falcon was nowhere to be found. Suddenly, Damon bounded back down the path from which they had just come. Damon, no, shouted Aiden. We mustn't split up but Damon was gone. We have to wait here until they come back, said Lily. We can't risk getting split up any more than we already are. Mackenzie kept calling for Damon and Charles, but there was no answer. We've got to do something, said Aiden. They're both helpless out there. A shriek sliced through the forest. Ah! I've heard that scream before, said Aiden. It's Charles. But before he could say another word, they heard something else. It sounded like a low, deep breath, but it was very loud. It echoed eerily through the dead forest. Then there was silence. The children were helplessly looking at each other, wondering what to do next. When Charles came running frantically up the path, his eyes wide open. The spy, huge spy, was all he could say. What happened? asked Aiden as he ran over and picked up his falcon. I, I was caught in something very sticky. Go on, Charles. You're safe now. This horribly large spider. No, it was more of a monster. It was coming for me and I couldn't move. Charles started to shake. Aiden put his hand over Charles's head and tucked him close to his chest. Go on, old friend. Tell us what happened. All right. Well, the beast had backed me into a corner. He was going to eat me when Damon came out of nowhere. He, he, he approached the eight-legged eight monster with no fear at all. And then our little friend breathed fire out of his mouth and burned it alive. I can't believe it. He's too young for that, isn't he? How would we know? asked Mackenzie. We've never had a pet dragon before. That's not all, Charles butted in. After charbroiling the monster, Damon, he... What did he do, Charles? asked Aiden. He... he, he oh, you don't want to know. 
Just then, Damon pitter-pattered his way down into the clearing. He looked up at his friends, put his hand over his mouth, and burped mightily. Oh, how disgusting, exclaimed Lily. You ate the monster, yelled Mackenzie as she went over and hugged Damon. And you saved Charles. Aren't you wonderful? Oh, he's wonderful, all right, said Aiden. A baby dragon that eats monsters. Now that's what I call a good traveling companion. He unrolled the map and began to plot their course when he noticed Damon walking across the campsite toward the forest. Now where are you going? asked Aiden. Are you still hungry? Mama, was all the little dragon said as he continued away. And then he started cooing softly. Aiden's heart raced. Had Damon found his mother? Were they now in dreadful danger? Aiden gathered Lily and Mackenzie closer to him. Then, suddenly, Damon stopped at Aiden's bedding. The children's hearts melted as they watched the little dragon gently reach down and pick up Aiden's necklace and hold it to his chest. With his head sorrowfully pointed downward, he said, Mama, Mama. The dragon scale. He had never thought Aiden was his mother. It was the pendant that drew him. I'm sorry, Damon said Aiden as the children walked up toward him. Did that scale come from your mother? The little dragon looked up at Aiden and nodded. Aiden knelt down and gave his best attempt at a smile. You can keep that, he said with his voice trembling. I believe it belongs to you. Damon continued to clutch the necklace. Aiden wondered what could be going through his infant brain. Then... The little dragon put the necklace over Aiden's head as he quietly said, Friends. Aiden looked at Lily McKenzie and then back to Damon as he said, Yes, indeed, Damon, we are friends. Aiden ran his hand down the center of Damon's back where he found spines running from the top of his head down to his pointed tail. They were hard and cool to the touch. Looking at him, his back and chest areas appeared soft. However, Aiden was amazed to find out that this white exterior was actually crystal-like to the touch, almost like armor. How could something so hard look so soft? What marvelous creatures these dragons must be. Friends, he thought to himself. No, little prince, I believe that we will be much more. And friends. Wow. I would love to have a dragon as a friend. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next chapter. Uh-oh. Are you ready for this? The Return of Gorgon. Oh, you know he'd be back. Oh, you knew it. You know it? You know it? Either way. Here he comes. All right, get the book. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Soon they had everything packed up and were ready to continue their journey. They walked north through the woods of Didicus. The woods seemed to be changing with every step as the wondrous oversized plants and trees were replaced with moss-filled trees boasting giant roots. They pushed along until they could go forward no longer. They had arrived at a large swamp. We're going to have to choose another way, said Aiden, pulling out his map. We certainly can't walk through that swamp. There's no telling how deep the water is or what creatures might be lurking in there. If we head east and follow this path around, we should be able to avoid this area. Won't that take us out of our way? asked Lily. This is the day that we're to find the elves, isn't it? It's all right, shouted Mackenzie from behind. Let's go straight. I'm not afraid of anything lurking in there. I think Aiden has a good point, said Charles. Safety first, you know. Oh, Charles, you're just scared, said Mackenzie. Of course I'm scared. You weren't the one being attacked by that multi-legged monster. 
Aiden, Lily started. We don't have much time to... No, I've made my decision, he interrupted. We will use the eastern path and go around. I don't want to put us in any more danger. We'll just have to move quickly. Aiden chose a path that led them closer to the hills in the east, away from the swamp. The path looked longer, but Aiden could see no other way. Morning soon turned into afternoon as the sun raced across the sky. Aiden began to worry that he had underestimated the time it would take to use this path. They stopped at a small waterfall where they were able to refresh themselves, but quickly moved on in an attempt to make up precious time. Both Aiden and Lily tried to find things to talk about, hoping to ease the tension that was building with each step. But it was of no use. There was only one thing on their minds. How much longer would it be until they arrived in the Valley of the Elves? Aiden breathed a heavy sigh. The sun will soon be setting. I'm not quite sure how much farther we have to go, but I know we're headed in the right direction. We'd be a lot farther along if those trolls hadn't attacked us the other day, said Lily. And even further if that swamp hadn't forced us to take the long way around, said Aiden. Aren't hills supposed to go up and down? Up and down? asked Mackenzie. We've been traveling down for quite a while now without going up. Isn't that a bit strange? With everything else on his mind, Aiden hadn't noticed, but she was right. They had been traveling downward for a very long time. He pulled the map out of his pouch and studied it. He, we had to travel east in order to avoid the swamp, he said, trying his best to sound confident. And now we're traveling northwest. We, we should be headed directly for the Valley of the Elves. Aiden rolled up the map and surveyed the land in front of them. The entrance to the valley should be over there. Charles popped his head up. What valley? Surely not the Valley of the Monsters? There's no such thing as the Valley of the Monsters, laughed Aiden. At least, not that I'm aware of. Anyway, now you have a baby dragon to protect you. Suddenly, a voice rang out just in front of them. Your dragon cannot protect you from me. It is the Valley of the Monsters, shrieked Charles. I knew it! I just knew it! The group stopped suddenly. Who said that? asked Aiden nervously. Come closer, Aiden of Oran. Come and watch as your destiny comes to an end. That's Gorgon, I think. I, I think that because... The title of the chapter was Gorgon, so I think that's who said that. Plus, I wrote the book, <laughs> so I think that's who said that. But this is the end of the segment, so um, we will have to wait until next time. We'll see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be kind. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.